Okay guys, so um, I just wanted to create um, something to show you how to export models that you've made or your own assets that you've made um, in 3ds Max that we've been using um, and bring them into your game in Unreal. Okay, so I'm just going to use this crate that we did uh, together um, as an example. So here's my model, it's all ready to go, I've made it and it looks nice. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go File, Export, um, and the file type that we're going to use is the, the preset one, which is FBX. Okay, there's plenty here, and there's others that would also work, um, OBJ for example, but we're going to use FBX, kind of my go to one that I always use for exporting things to go into Unreal anyway. Um, it's got a folder there called models, obviously save it in a, a location that you know. Um, let's call it create and press save. So when it's an FBX you've got some kind of settings that you need to sort out when you're exporting. So the ones you want to do, so if you go to geometry, um, by default this turbo smooth option is turned on. You don't want that. All right, it's going to like try and round off um, all of the corners and things of the model, which for most of your models you're not going to want. So make sure that's turned off. Don't touch anything else there. Animations. We haven't got any animations here, so turn that off. Um, cameras again. We don't have any cameras. Turn that off. Don't have any lights. Turn that off. Audio. Don't have any audio anyway. Um, and just leave everything else as it is, really. So um, turn off turbo smooth and then the animation cameras and the lights okay that should be fine if you push ok then it takes a second to export so that's exported now I'm going to go to Unreal and this is the game that we've kind of been working on um, open up my level one remember this and I'm just going to put a crate in here basically so I'm going to go to my game assets at the moment I just have my coin I'm going to import um, from that um, folder that I had. There it is, create, and I'm going to open that. Um, you get a whole bunch of settings here. Um, I'm not going to touch that on that at the moment. Generally, all you need to do is just push import all. Okay, and it will import everything you need. Um, don't worry about that. Sometimes you get an error message, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gone horribly wrong. Um, and here you can see our crate. Okay, so it's brought in the material, the actual file for the texture that I was using, and the object itself. Okay, you can see those. You can go ahead and rename them if you want, but I'm going to leave those as they are um, for now. Obviously if you wanted to use this material on other items, you might want to rename that so you know it's something that you can look up um, You know when you're searching for things. But this is fine for now, so I'm just going to get this crate and drag it in to my level. Alright, so there we have the model that we made. Okay, if I play my game, there it is, bit tiny. Um, collisions are a bit weird as well, so what you might want to do, unless you've modeled it to scale when you actually created it originally, you probably will want to rescale it. So I'm going to Push R to get scale. I'm going to come over here. I'm not using my world settings anymore, which we were kind of touching on recently. Go to details. Here's scale. I'm going to make it twice the size in each direction. Push play. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so just if you just want the object in in there in the scene, then that's all really you needed to do. But um, I'll do something show you something else in the process here. So let's well, say you wanted to make this a bit more interactive. You know, you wanted your player to actually be able to move this thing around. Um, to do that, come over here again um, to where you were just scaling it. And you need to make the object movable. Okay, so by default it's static. Make it movable. And then just scroll down here a little bit and tick to simulate physics. Okay, and then tick to simulate um, collisions. Okay, 
should be all we need to do is just push play. Now when I kind of walk into this, I don't want to turn off the edge, so I'm going to walk into it this way, it kind of bounces around. Um, you know, so it might be quite a good thing really if you were sort of, um, you know, enough time, but if you were making a game like we are, um, where you had, let's say you had a high wall up in front of me here, and I needed to push some crates around so I could jump on them to, to get up to that high, that kind of thing, you know, you might want to have the player to have to push these around um, to access a certain area in the level or something like that, you know, just a general mechanic idea you might want to use. But that's how you can get an object or a model from 3D um, and into uh, Unreal. All right, fairly simple. Okay, so that's all. Hey guys, one thing um, I just paused and um, come back into this because one other thing I wanted to just show you, and it is to do with collisions, because although this is a real simple object, the collisions have kind of sorted themselves out for us already. Like, you know, um, when I'm interacting with it, that's good. Um, the collisions are already kind of there in the right place because it's just a box. That's not always going to be the case though. So, um, what you'll often need to do. Is come into the actual object, it, object itself. So I'm going to open the crate object. Here it is. Um, and up here you've got an option for your collisions, all right? So if you had a real complex object that you wanted to be able to walk around, like it's like a, I don't know, some kind of staircase or um, something you could climb into, then you would need to do this. So I'm going to just remove the, the basic collisions that uh, it gives me automatically. Okay, get rid of those. And then I'm going to add um, this collision here. Okay, add 26 DPO simplified collision. Doesn't really matter what all that means at the moment. I click that. You can see my collisions there at the moment. And then what I need to do is just come down in settings here. That's where you've got the collision presets. Okay. I'm sorry, not collision presets, collision complexity. Um, and we want to use complex collisions. Okay. Um, if I click that, look at the box, you can see there's like purple lines are where the collisions are, so which is like the complex ones wrap the collisions around it perfectly around the object. But if you're just using simple, it's just. Um, just a simple collision, which it works fine because it's a box. But if it was something that was much more complicated, you can use complex collisions like that. Okay, so I'll save that um, and close again. I'm, before I do that, though, I'm actually going to leave it as simple because it's silly having that as complex for this object. But if you did have a more complex object, that is what you would do. Okay, so save, close.